We're with Colin Smith from Adobe today looking at the latest Creative Suite 5 and uh, all sorts of different modules, but I uh, want to hone in on uh, InDesign. Sure. What are some of the uh, the cool new features? Well, InDesign CS5 is the staple out there for publishing. It's what people use for magazines, newspapers, you name it. But there was a few things that people wanted it didn't have. One is multiple size pages. So right now you can have you know hundreds of pages that are the same size, but in this example here, we want a flap on the on the right hand side, and we see this sometimes in magazines, right? A little flap that folds out, of course. So we do that simply by adding a page. And, and this is not new, we just insert a page, but what we have is the ability to, to choose this new page tool. So when I click on it, I'm selecting that particular page. And when I select it, I can do something with it, like change its size to something different. Ah, okay. It, it sounds obvious, but yeah. you know we didn't have that before, so now we've got complete control over those page sizes. Next up is being able to move and scale two images at the same time, or any two objects. We've been able to do this in the past, but it was a little bit cumbersome. You actually had to take the objects, group them together, and grab the scale tool, and grab them, and move them. Yes. So here's an example. Right here, I've got two images. So this image has been cut out of the background. Yeah. And we've got the other background image in here. I want them to be over here on the right-hand side. I'll select it, drag it over, and boom, it's done. A little bit easier, right? Yeah, instead of doing all the different components to it. The main thing that people do when they're laying out uh, magazines and, and things of that sort is they're bringing in images and they're placing them on the page. Um, and that's usually a tough job of you know measuring things out, using math and, and rulers and guides and stuff like that. But the computer's pretty ac accurate, so why don't we use that? So I'm going to start by calling up something called Mini Bridge, and this is um, a little version of the, the normal bridge that we have, but now it's right in the application. Some people didn't like that they had to leave InDesign, go all the way to Bridge, and then come back here. So we now have got Mini Bridge uh, right here. We shall call it Mini Bridge. <laughs> and I'll select these four images, four at a time, and drag them in. And I want them to be placed into these quadrants. So very simple, one, two, three, four images, equal size, lined up perfectly. And it's not like we couldn't do that before. But these images are all different sizes right exactly. now. Exactly, okay. all different sizes, uh, different aspect ratios. So as I click and drag, you'll see it's coming in as the aspect ratio uh, of the first one. Yeah. But I want four images. Watch what happens when I hit my up arrow, it divides it into two. My right arrow divides it into four. So now when I let go, you'll see all four images will drop in place, but they're not sized correctly. No. Uh, the next step that a designer would do is they'd meticulously grab each one, they'd scale it up, they'd move it around. Well, we've got something- Which takes time. Exactly. Something really easy. Up at the top there, it's called Auto Fit and Fill Frame Proportion. Oh, I love it. So now we just you know need to- You time I waste doing that oh, on, I know. on brochures and stuff like that? Like it can take sometimes 20 minutes just yeah. to get everything sized. Properly. Yeah, and, and notice that I can just grab the inside of the image or I can grab the whole frame uh, very easily. Yeah. So we had the ability before to uh, to take something like the, the inside of this image and move it around, but if you didn't understand the idea that there's a selection arrow and a, a direct selection arrow and you had to get in there, it's, we just have, I like to call it the donut. It's just this little circle that shows up inside and click and move it around. The last thing to talk about is the interactive aspect of InDesign. Uh, we have the ability now to work with documents and I'll, I'll load one in here very quickly. This is a, um, a document that's created as a city guide and it's created by a traditional print designer, but InDesign now has these really cool interactive features where this can be a button, it can have rollovers, we can have animations, we can have all of this stuff happening. In fact, we have a special workspace just called Interactive, and right from here, I can preview what this looks like. So let me just open this up in a browser, test it in a browser. So we're going to see Flash output directly from InDesign CS5. So do you have to know Flash to? Not at all. Okay. We've got tools in there. We've got presets for, for things like, look at that, animations. Here come the little clouds. <laughs> um, and That's we've got rollovers. So when I jump to these, it's going to jump to different areas. All these animations, every single thing you're seeing was done in InDesign CS5, not in Flash. Very cool. What about some uh, exporting as well? 
Well, uh, we can export, of course, to PDF format, but ebooks are all the rage now, yeah. and EPUB is the uh, the universal format. So we can export this out to that universal EPUB format. So like things like the iPad, the Sony Reader, the Kindle. Exactly. Yeah. We'll be able to, to play it. So if you've got business documents, you've got brochures or whatever, load them right in. You know, Microsoft Word format, we treat it well, bring it in, and then you're out to EPUB formats. Bob's your uncle. That's it. Colin Smith from Adobe talking about InDesign with the latest Creative Suite 5. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.